Hi, this introduction video for your American Home Serger is going to go through all the different parts of the machine and just talk a little bit about getting familiar with it. To begin with, I already have my machine threaded, but when you get started with your machine, the first thing you'll want to do is fully extend this thread stand. You'll also notice that there's some little knobs on this thread tree that will lock into place so that it's in the right position. Your machine can use up to four cones of thread or four spools of sewing thread. When you put your machine thread on, you will either use this thread cone holder or if you've got a small spool of thread, you can just simply set it on top without the cone holder. When you're looking up at the top of the machine, you're gonna notice that there are four different places that correspond with my four different spools of thread. And for this video, I've chosen to use thread colors that match the threading areas where the thread's going to go. As we take our eyes down the front of the machine, you'll notice that this is an area that is where your tension discs are. And whenever you're using your machine, when you raise your presser foot, it opens up the tension discs even though you may not see them being open. You'll also see that as our thread travels down, it disappears and you can merely slide your door over to the right and tip it forward to open it up and reveal the inner part of the machine. Your machine is a color-coded machine, meaning that any area where your thread needs to go is going to have a little mark on it that shows the same corresponding color, which is why using a thread color that's the same as that area is helpful when you're first getting familiar with your machine. Also on the inside of it, you're going to notice that there is a little chart that is showing you some really important information about your threading and most importantly, threading order. When it comes to your American home machine, it's very important that you thread it in a particular order. And you're always going to start with this area, which is the upper looper thread. In the threading video, I'm going to show an awful lot of how to thread the machine and explain that a lot more fully. You'll also notice that on the inside of the machine, it's going to tell you what type of needle your machine uses. Right up here is where your knife is and to move it out of the way, you can push it to the right and then use your finger to lift it up. This helps you to see parts of the machine a little bit more clearly. I'm gonna identify some of those parts for you right now. This is the upper looper. And if you look closely, you'll notice that it is using a green thread. And so again, the upper looper threading here is going to use all of the green areas on your machine and that's how you'll thread it. Next, I'm going to point out to you that as I rotate my hand wheel towards me, you can see that this area right here, which has my blue thread, that's the lower looper. So think about your loopers as being very similar to a bobbin in your sewing machine. Next, we have two different needle positions. We have both the left needle and the right needle. And those are places where there's red and yellow thread. Now your machine has this cutting blade knife that's up here, but there's also a stationary knife that's over on the side of the machine which is anchored in place by this screw here. And when this is down in position, that's what actually cuts your fabric when you're surging. To open up the side door, you can grasp the machine and just open this door off to the side, which will expose this area on the machine, which makes it easier to thread your lower looper. You'll also notice that on the outside, you can move this lever to the free arm area. And then when you open up the machine, it will allow you to work on smaller pieces when you're doing surging. My machine right now is set up for a four thread overlock. I'll also point out that over here on the side of the machine is where you can change your stitch length. And you'll notice that that corresponds with the number from one through four. On the inside of this knob, you have the ability to change your differential feed simply by moving this lever to the left or to the right. When it's on the letter N, that's neutral. 
as I move this towards the back, you can see that it's gathering my fabric. And when I move it into the opposite direction, that's gonna control my feed dogs so that it moves the fabric as it's surging in at a slower pace in the front. I'm going to run a piece of fabric through the machine right now, making sure that my presser foot is down. And this is where you can see the cutting action of the machine. Your machine comes with two additional accessory feet, the blind hem foot and the elastic foot. In order to be able to replace your foot, raise your presser foot, press on the white release, give yourself an extra little lift and pull your foot off to the side. While the foot's off, it's a good opportunity to take a look at the needle plate. Your machine also comes with one additional needle plate. The difference between these two has to do with the stitch finger. I'm going to move my knife out of the way and point out that your stitches actually get formed on this piece of metal and that little needle-like piece. This is how you get the width. The width is judged by this position in addition to your cutting blade knife as it moves in and out. To see your cutting blade and to make adjustments, rotate this knob here on the front of your machine and watch as the knife snugs in closer to the needle plate. To make your stitches wider or to cut a deeper piece, rotate it back over to the right fully. To exchange the throw plate, you'll remove just the front screw. This particular needle plate is for narrow rolled hemming stitches and as you can see, my stitches are going to be formed exclusively on this one little piece. To put my presser foot back on the machine, I'm going to do the opposite of what I had done. To make it easier to put your foot back on your machine, raise this spring, lift it onto the foot, and then by lifting up your presser foot lifter, you want to position it so that it's right above the bar that's on the foot. Once you have it in place, if it doesn't snap down on its own, press on this button and you'll notice that it slips down into place. Now that you understand all the parts of your machine and how they work to form a good stitch, you're ready to thread.